Hey everyone. Yeah, it seems everything is politicized these days. And even science itself is susceptible. Yes, in the name of identity politics or social justice, even COVID-19 must take a back seat or be placed on the back burner in order to emphasize or place into the spotlight outrage culture and the political divisiveness that pumping up or stoking racial tensions usually brings. Headline out of CBC Radio on the program, As It Happens, over a thousand health experts signed letters supporting anti-black racism protests despite COVID-19 risks. Racism and oppression is a public health issue, says infectious disease expert Dr. Abby Hussein. This is posted June 8, 2020. More than 1,000 U.S. public health experts say it would be a mistake to shut down protests against police brutality and anti-black racism following the murder of George Floyd in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. So anyways, folks, so like I say, obviously, I mean, come on. I mean, I shouldn't have to hammer away about this too much. Just a, just a few uh, quick points, right? We were all told the lockdowns have to happen. They must take place to flatten the curve, right? Millions of Canadians had to lose their jobs, their livelihood, their income. Why? We got to flatten the curve. And it's important. You don't want grandma to die, do you? Even for the example of someone, you know, out in the park, walking their dog alone, or doing chin-ups alone at the local park, or taking a stroll along the beach. Even if you're alone. I mean, how many examples have we seen people being issued tickets, pretty substantial tickets, I'll add like 880 upwards, even over $1,000, some of them, for doing nothing more than disobeying an order. Not because they placed anyone in jeopardy or were spreading COVID-19. I mean, think about how many examples of people who got tickets that were by themselves, whether, like I say, they were in the beach, in a park, a playground, a schoolyard, whatever. I mean, we, we've heard countless examples of people who have been issued fines or citations for doing nothing more than disobeying the mandated lockdown orders. Yet, thousands and thousands and thousands of them can do that all at once as long as it's for a political cause that the media instinctively will not push back against. Why? Because like I say, it's all ideologically driven. We know the ideological divide these days, and most of the people in the media who are typically on the left side of the political spectrum are not going to stand in opposition to this, even though they know in their own minds how insane and contradictory their message it is. Because to them, playing politics, in particular identity politics, is much more important, and their virtual signaling to those on their side of the political spectrum, it's much more important than being clear, concise, or consistent in their messaging or their stance on any particular issues. We've seen that time and time again, and this is just the latest, most recent example of that. By being a thousand U.S. public health experts, these are experts. If these experts, aren't they the same, are they the same kind of experts that the CBC or these leftist media outlets would be using to say, no, you can't do anything. You can't leave your house. I mean, I, for one, am just one of countless Canadians who have had a loved one, an elderly loved one, pass away, and I couldn't go to the funeral. Matter of fact, a funeral was not even held by sheer fact that you just can't take the risk. We just can't take the risk of spread, spreading coronavirus or COVID-19, right? But yet, like I say, the script or the narrative is completely flipped upside down entirely for certain particular people, actors, or groups. Such a contradictory and conflicting message. I mean, come on, that is maddening, right? I mean, that's got to really irk you. At the very least, the fact that there's such a contradictory or conflicting message or narrative that we're getting and hearing time and time again. Consistency be damned. It's all about ideology these days. In an open letter published Friday, around 1,200 doctors, nurses, and epidemiologists argued that while risky, these protests are vital to the national public health and to the threatened health specifically of black people in the United States. Like I say, that is a complete political response or narrative. And yet, these people are touted as public health experts. Well, I guess you might be able to say that they're public health experts. I don't know any of them personally. But could you at least add in, for clarity purpose, for truth purposes, complete hypocrites as to the advice they'd be normally given in the absence 
of this kind of racial rhetoric. White supremacy is a lethal public health issue that predates and contributes to COVID-19. Black people are twice as likely to be killed by police compared to white people, but the effects of racism are far more pervasive, the letter said. Well, first of all, could they at least, I mean, if they're going to put forth that kind of rhetoric, at the very least, there should be a link. You see how they put a link there in an open letter published Friday? You see that? At the very least, you know, place a link to this study or these statistics or these surveys or something where there's evidence where black people are disproportionately killed by police in comparison to any other race. Because I'm hearing actual opposing reports, and if I remember to do so, I'll place a link to a couple of them in the description of this video so that I actually do what the uh, contributor to this article or the author of this article didn't do, which is to cite actual facts or statistics to back up my claim. Stop politicizing or dividing the races. I'm against police brutality towards anyone, regardless of your skin color. And if we're going to try to correct or fix that situation, it's much wiser to try to unify us rather than divide us along racial lines. But in terms of the white supremacy is a lethal public health, health issue, listen, yes, there's some bad people out there, folks, and some of them might even call themselves white supremacists. But is it really a, a lethal public health issue? Is it really? Is it really? Or is it government? And those who are the enforcers or the mindless order followers for government which is a monopoly of force of violence, right? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's at the core of the issue, not race. Maybe it's institutionalized violence and the fact that these officers are incentivized to cause harm to many people under the guise of protecting and serving or upholding the laws. And that's the other thing. What about a lot of these laws that are very draconian, authoritarian, that are actually at the core, the root problem, and the main reason why these kind of incidents take place in the first place. And I'm no fan of anyone using counterfeit money to purchase anything. I think it's wrong. But if it's wrong for one person, one black man to do it, then it should also be considered wrong for central planners, central bankers, and big government from doing the very same thing, but on a much, much, much grander scale. It's all about the hypocrisy and contradictions, as far as I'm concerned. I prefer to stand on principle rather than play politics, which is a lot more than I can say for most contributors to the establishment media in this country. Dr. Abby Hussein, an infectious disease fellow at the University of Washington and one of the letter's first signatories, said the goal is to change the narrative that those protesting are unsafe and putting people at risk from the pandemic. Well, are they or are they not? Why would you want to change the narrative? Is that not true? If it's not true, then like I say, back up the evidence because if it's not true, hey, I'm, matter of fact, I'm all for that. If you can prove that these huge protests, thousands of thousands of people, is not going to escalate or increase the potential of spreading COVID-19, then <laughs> that's good. Then let's get rid of the lockdowns entirely and let's get back to the business of actually doing business and actually having a real life, as far as that goes as well. But no, like I say, that's not where they're going with this. This is politicizing science and nothing more. But of course, they've been doing that since the onset. Start all the way back to the WHO. We think that racism and oppression is a public health issue. And so for us, it's essential that we show support and make that a priority. But we provide protesters with tips and ways to reduce harm and be safe while they're doing this, she told As It Happens host Kara Law. <laughs> Once again, you know, that, hey, if you're out there and some cop's going to ticket you for not following the orders or the mandates of the COVID lockdowns, well, just say, listen, I was told or I read that a thousand U.S. health experts basically said that, no, no, all, all you got to do is just practice some uh, good personal hygiene throw on a mask, and, and we're all good to go. No need to get too overly concerned about any potential outbreak or further spread of the coronavirus, right? Let's see if you try using that as an excuse, if it'll work for you. Chances are, it probably won't. And the reason for that is, is these large numbers of people, these protesters, and then if you add in the rioters and the looters, like I say, that big giant force of people 
that spectacle of thousands and thousands of people or hundreds of thousands or ultimately millions of people spread out across the country, whether it's the U.S. or Canada, all protesting against government, that is the key, folks. That is the power that they hold. It's the power of numbers. The media, the ruling class, they all back down and tuck their tail between their leg and are bending over backwards to offer up political rhetoric to make excuses for this stuff. And why? Because these people are willing to put the fear of the people into the people that rule over them. Whereas, like I said in the stream that I just did not too long ago, is, well, for you right-wingers, yeah, the reason why nobody gives a crap about your grievances, your hard times, or the issues that you have with big government, or some of the policies that the Trudeau liberals in particular in Canada have implemented is, yeah, you're just not a force to be reckoned with. You show time and time again, most of you, that, that yeah, you might bitch and complain for a short time, or you'll just put your nose to the grindstone, put your head down, and go about life doing whatever your masters told you to do, right? So, yeah, they don't care about you. You're of no concern to them because you're of no threat. At the very least, you should take notice that the political and media class are wholly beholden to those who they see as a threat to their bottom line or their existence, whether it's political or economic. But if they recognize you're just one of those people that typically represents the right side of the political spectrum, and all you're going to do is complain, whine, bitch, and moan about things, but then never do anything to push back against these kind of authoritarian tactics or impose mandates. Yeah, they don't care. Bitch, whine and moan all you want as long as that's all you do. And yeah, that is pretty much all the right does these days. It's a Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.